I'm curious, were, uh, were visual development artists ever at those story meetings? People like people on Mary Blair's level, people who had done uh, concept art? No, generally not. Generally not. Story, you know, it's really funny. Uh, Walt, if Walt had seen the visual development, and he probably had seen it, and he liked the way it was going, he pretty much signed off on it. It was, it was quick. He either liked it or he didn't like it. Uh -huh. If he liked the way it was going, and, it, and it, especially if it was being led by somebody like Mary Blair, that he trusted, that, that he, he trusted implicitly, implicitly, then yeah, fine, you know, it's, it's looking good, it's good. Just, just keep going. So no, very rare that viz dev people would ever be in the meetings. It was always story, the director, and the writer, yeah, if we had, I always call it a writer that is a guy who has a typewriter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, writer, writer. Although all of us in story, we were all essentially screenwriters. That's what story was. You're, you're writing the movie. You're just doing it visually. So uh, in our case, Larry Clemens was the, the writer, writer, because he, uh -huh. he had a typewriter. So that made him <laughs> a, real, a real writer, because he, uh -huh. he would give us, give us typewritten pages, and, and we could either follow those pages or, you know, modify them. Everything was very loose. It was a very organic way of working. A, a complete give and take, a collaboration. You know, you just try things. How about this? How about that? And that's how it worked. When you had something you felt was uh, was working, that was coming together, you would show it to Wooly, you know, the, who was the uh, film's director. If Wooly felt it was decent enough to show to Walt, then he would set up a meeting with Walt. Then if Walt liked it, then it would be okay for production and then that it can move into the next phase of being prepared to actually go into animation. That visual development, um, was that part of the, of, the, of the movie during the entire production process or did it just no, happen it's once at the beginning? At the and start, and yeah, it's okay. pretty much at the beginning. In other words, by the time, by the time a, f a film moved into story, let's say if the visit deaf person was Mary Blair, she would have moved on. Okay. She would have been gone maybe, who knows, six months to a year, you know, mm -hmm. and she had done her work, you know, and, and, and she would just, you know, swoop in and just bam, bam, bam. And it was amazing how fast she was, too. She was not only prolific, she was incredibly fast. She was, she was like a, a one-woman art department. Tell me about that. I don't that. know how she cracked out so much work. How, is, this, is this what you've discovered just from looking at the amount of work she did in a short period of time? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I, I was just amazed at uh -huh. how much work she did on, mm -hmm. on each production. And, uh -huh. and, and not so much that. It was how quickly she, she was able to accomplish it. You know, you would think it would have dragged on for years. Because today, it's not unusual to have Viz Dev on a new feature film go on for, you know, for years. Uh, but Mary, uh, I think it's almost as though she just knew what she wanted. Like she didn't have to search for it, try to find it, you know, and, and she just, like, she got it. She just saw it, you know. Uh -huh. She just knew uh -huh. what to put down. And I think that that's what amazes me about great talent is because they just know, you know. <laughs> and I guess that's what, you know, confounds all the rest of us who have to struggle. Some people, it just flows out of them. They're, they're just that good. It just seems to just flow. Just from an observer, it just seemed to be effortless, you know. And, and I think that's what kind of blew me away was, was just how she did this brilliant work and did it so quickly. Somebody told me, and I, and I can't for the life of me remember who it was, but they said they were visiting a home up in Northern California that was the home of, I think, her brother-in-law. Uh, Preston? Preston, Preston Blair. Blair? Uh -huh. Yeah. Because Lee Blair, uh, her husband, worked at Disney, and then Pres yes. and Preston Blair worked here at Disney. But somebody said, and I forget whose home it was, but it was one of the Blair's homes up in Northern California, and they said there was still a canvas in a studio of a Mary Blair painting. She had started a painting and never completed it, and that the Blairs had left the canvas, maybe out of respect for Mary, left the un unfinished painting, was still on the easel even today. And uh, I remember some artist told me that because he, he had visited the home and he saw the painting that, that Mary was doing. And I said, oh man, I wish I, I wish, you know, I wish I had a photograph of that. Yeah. I, I wonder what she was painting, you know. But he said it was uh, still on the easel, something that, that she had started and, and, and not finished. But, but for me, you know, she, she still remains this, for me, uh, a, a woman of mystery because yes. I never had the opportunity to meet her. I've only seen her in photographs. I've seen her in movie film because mm -hmm. they shot footage 
uh, down in South America when, right, when, they, right. made, when mm. they made the trip. Did you see the film, by I the way? I did see it, a Wal great little Wald movie. and El Grupo. Great yeah. little movie, yes. Yeah. Now you say that some group of Disney artists or yeah. artists really pushed for this project on Mary Blair. Do you know how, that, how the idea got started? I mean, how did Mary's whole yeah. reputation get, get rehabilitated or how did it Well, get we, were, we were all very much aware uh, of, of, of her work. And a, a lot of us young people here at Disney, uh, not so young anymore, and a lot of the younger kids at Pixar were very much aware of, of her work. Um, Pete Docter, uh, a director I had worked with at Pixar, was a big Mary Blair fan. And Pete was very much behind uh, this project. And mm -hmm. really, uh, we owe a lot to Pete Docter, probably thanked on the book, kind of like spearheading this project. But um, Was she sort of it, lying dormant for, for many years? It had been talked about for a number of years, and I and I'm, I can't even think of the of the major players involved. I do know that there was an earlier book about the Disney development artists. Yes, that one was also was by a, Kane Maker. Yeah, it was that's also by right. John Kane Maker. Yeah. There was an earlier book by uh -huh. Kane Maker, uh -huh. and we felt that even though we were grateful, it had given a chapter, I think, on uh, yes. on Mary's career. We felt that that. It was kind of a downer. It it, it sort of dealt with the uh, her later life yes. and when things weren't going well, right? And the drinking uh -huh. and all of that. And and, mm -hmm. and it said we we all we said yeah we read the chapter. And it was great to re read about Mary and all the other artists, but we, we felt kind of bummed out uh -huh. after reading this. Uh -huh. We said we need a book that would celebrate celebrate the art of yes. Mary Blair, and yeah. that's that's how this thing began uh -huh. to happen because uh -huh. then. Ken Shu at Disney Publishing, who's our creative director at publishing, he said, yeah, we've got all of this artwork. You know, there's no worry about artwork. We got, he said, we got tons of Mary Blair artwork. Right. The, the, the tricky part is sifting through it mm -hmm. and deciding what we're going to use. And, and, so, and so it went back and forth at, with Disney Publishing. And they were like, well, we don't know. Can we sell it? Would anybody be interested? back and forth and for a time it looked like the project was dead it was not going to happen the other big reason was it was doubtful that a third party publisher could do the book because of all of the uh, all the copyright issues yeah, yeah. All, of that, uh -huh. all of that so yes. that if it was going to be done at all it would have to be done by Disney and could we get Disney to sign off on it and so and I thought oh man this is hopeless it's never going to happen and then our colleagues at Pixar they began to push for it. Pete Docter, in particular, began mm -hmm. to push for it. And then finally, John Canemaker came on board and said, if we can get this thing going, he says, I'll, I'll write the book. And I think once John came on board, then they began to think, you know what? Okay, maybe, maybe this is something we, is worth doing. And so then, then that's why this book finally happened. I mean, it was a struggle, but it finally got done. Well, it's interesting to me that it was because of Disney artists that it happened. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because, well, a lot of, if you weren't a Disney artist, chances are you wouldn't know Mary mm -hmm. Blair. So how would you know? And since there were really no books on her, uh, if you didn't work for the company, chances are you might not even have heard her name. So how would you know? So for us, this was the opportunity to, like, reveal Mary's uh, art mm -hmm. and her brilliance to the world, you know, like, you should know this woman. And, and, and again, keep it, and not just artists, because there are a lot of, dis, there's a lot of good support out there, Disney historians, people who really care about, right. about the legacy. And I know a lot of these people. Matter of fact, we had a, gosh, we had a, a, a dinner or a lunch a few months ago, and sadly I missed it because I, I was out of town. It was in the spring, but it, we call it the uh, Disney Historian's Dinner. And I attended one a couple of years ago. And it's all of these people who, uh, and not always ex-Disney employees, but people who have just written about Disney uh -huh. and studied the company and, and, and know the legacy and uh -huh. know the artists. And they come together and we have this dinner, but uh -huh. it's a celebration of Disney. And like I said, and they're not all artists. Uh, some of them are, I guess, no, there's a category of Disney historian. Uh -huh. Guys like Kane Maker uh -huh. and Charles Solomon. David Kaufman. Uh, Kaufman, yeah, it's another Barrier, one. Michael Barrier. Yeah, Michael Barrier, uh -huh. exactly. All of these guys who know Disney, written about Disney, uh -huh. and we all come together for this for this dinner every couple of years. Oh, how nice. And it's the Disney historian's uh -huh. dinner.